All right, welcome to the RPS Finance Committee. Um, Ms. Lovely, will you please read our statement? Yes, this meeting is being held as an electronic meeting pursuant to and in compliance with Richmond City Council's Ordinance 2020-093, adopted April 9th, 2020, and extended by Ordinance Number 2020-183, adopted August 20th, 2020 and by ordinance number 2020-232 adopted December 14th, 2020 and the school board's resolution approved on April 20th, 2020. The meeting notice stated that the meeting would be a virtual meeting and would be live streamed for the public on the school division's Facebook page and the link was provided. Information on how individuals needing translation services could obtain these services was published on board docs. The agenda of the meeting was also posted to board docs. After roll call, we will state how many board members are participating at this time. Ms. Doerr? Present. Ms. Page? Ms. Rizzi? Here. At this time, um, you will proceed with the meeting as an informational meeting until Ms. Page arrives. Thank you. Yes, uh, for the public's for the public record, uh, we do not have quorum, and so we will be proceeding um, as an informational meeting. Um, still be uh, still be live cast, etc. Um, and when Miss Page arrives, we'll have quorum, um, and an alternate to official meeting. Um, before we kick off into the agenda, um, I'd like to welcome Ms. Rizzi as our newest member to the committee. Uh, grateful to have you. And I thought it might be helpful to just go around um, the Zoom room and introduce everyone so that Ms. Rizzi um, knows everyone's roles. I assume she's interacted with many of you, but thought it would be good to just get oriented on uh, who usually attends these meetings. So, um, uh, Ms. Payne, if you could start, and then we'll just, um, anyone can chime in next, just say your name and, and your role with RPS. My name is Wanda Payne, and I'm the Director of Finance. Hi, Ms. Rizzi. My name is Lynn Braga, and I'm the Executive Director of Finance and Budget. Ms. Rizzi, this is Milton Parker, uh, Senior School Board Auditor. Ms. Rizzi, this is Latanya Holloway. I'm School Board Auditor. Hi, Ms. Rizzi, Michelle Hudasco, Chief of Staff, and my colleague Alana Gonzalez will begin joining us next month as well. So I work more on the budget and she works more on the finance, but um, we do it together. Thank you. It's very nice meeting you all. Uh, great. Um, Mr. Parker, can you kick us off with our first agenda item? Sure. So for our first agenda item, we have uh, basically the financial committee uh, the finance committee overview and it's just going to be a brief couple slides about the purpose of the finance committee and how the finance committee pretty much operates in conjunction with everybody on this phone call today budget and finance and internal audit and then there's some questions at the end so just give me a quick second and i'll share my screen can everyone see that yes all right. All right. So again, finance committee overview, and I'm not going to try to read this word for word, but basically the purpose of the finance committee, um, the, the finance committee here at Richmond Public Schools is to meet to determine, you know, the financial interests of the operations of the school division. Um, that is not limited to the development of the budget, uh, as well as the school board policies. Uh, the finance committee is charged with making recommendations to the school board itself at large, while the finance committee is a subcommittee of the school board and many of the recommendations still have to go through the school board. Um, as far as voting and things of that nature, it is the finance committee is expected to work a little more closely with the operations and administration, as well as internal audit to ensure that things are moving in the right frame because we're working through you all. Um, as the liaison to the board at large. Um, and again, in that same breath, I wanna say that the finance committee, while we do not have a formal audit committee, the finance committee also works with internal audit um, when it comes to the development of risk assessments, uh, the work plans, as well as review of audit reports in its final state. And then I just wanna talk a little bit about the roles um, in the meetings. The meetings for the finance committee meets uh, the last Tuesday of the month. Um, normally the finance committee meets 
every two, well, the last Tuesday of every month with uh, with the exception of budget season. Um, and that's usually announced. And then when there's budget season, this meeting goes on hold. Um, and then we get word from the finance chair uh, when the meetings are ready to resume, okay? Uh, so myself as the school board auditor, senior school board auditor, um, as of last year, I took the responsibility for working with the finance and budget team, as well as members of the finance committee um, and the school board clerk to develop the agendas, the agendas for this meeting. So there's an email that goes out um, asking for budgetary, I, um, I'm sorry, for finance committee agenda items. Um, and then we pretty much put it together and make sure that it gets out at timely and to all the necessary individuals as far as input and who will be sharing. Um, what items will be shared and who probably will facilitate that conversation or that agenda item, okay? Um, this is new, and I, and I know we want to kind of go in this framework uh, going forward. Uh, following the finance committee meeting, there will be an executive summary that'll be written um, to report to the school board at large during school board meetings, things of that nature regarding the activities of the finance committee and the, res and the result of the finance committee meetings. Um, one of the things that we really want to do going forward now is making sure that all of the subcommittees are reporting into the board at large to kind of circumvent, well, not circumvent, but kind of reduce, you know, some of the things that are being repeated over and over. So what we discuss in the finance committee meetings, um, putting together executive summaries and then reporting into the school board meetings. And with that being said, that, like I said, is just a couple of slides because we have a whole lot of... Um, most of you have talked to me already and I've talked to you. Um, is there any comments or questions regarding this? Ms. Rossi, any questions, comments? Um, <clears throat> uh, so um, I have been historically the chair of the finance committee. I would like to request at the next um, committee meeting that we have an official election. Um, for the chair of this committee moving forward. Um, I am happy to um, step down and make room for someone else if, um, if you'd like, Ms. Rizzi, or I'll pass that along to Ms. Page as well, um, or I'm happy to continue on in my capacity. So um, uh, just think on it and happy to discuss um, what the role, role might entail. Oh, here's Dawn, great. Don, Ms. Page, you're on mute. <laughs> oh, hello. Hi, uh, Ms. Page, great timing. I was just, um, Mr. Parker just gave an overview of the Finance Committee um, and our role. Um, I was just telling Ms. Rizzi that um, at the next meeting, we, since this is a new committee, um, our new members are in this committee, um, it would be uh, prudent to reelect the chair of the committee. Um, so I was saying that I'm um, happy to serve, continue to serve in my role, but also happy to make room for you, Ms. Page, or Ms. Rizzi, should either of you like to um, assume chair. So um, just let me know um, and we can talk about it in between this meeting and the, the next meeting. Um, I'd also, okay. um, I'd also just be interested from Ms. Rizzi um, and Ms. Page if there's any um, priorities that you all have as it relates to um, this committee um, and anything that you want to make sure that we, um, we uh, tackle over the next um, couple of months together. So you, you want us Sorry. to share oh. now? Yes, please. Yeah. Ms. Rizzi? I'm not feeling at this point, you know, I'm learning, I'm, I'm new, so I'm just kind of like, you know, looking to, to talk about a little bit before I start jumping in. <laughs> so Liz, um, I would like to really get started with the, the audit work plan so we can see the financial strength of the school division. Great, agreed. And also to be um, supportive of our audit department and support the recommendations that Mr. Parker has suggested because he is the subject matter expert. 
So I would like to give him the opportunity to exercise his expertise. Great. Um, well, I'm excited to hear what you've been up to since we last connected, Mr. Parker. Are you all good to move on to the next agenda item? Sure. Great. Yes. So the actual next agenda item was the selection of a chair for this committee. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Whoops. Um, so is that something you want to do today or do you want to move it to the next? Let's punt that for a month um, just to give Ms. Page and Ms. Rizzi some time to, to think on it. Okay, we'll do well, Liz, I'm I'm ready to um to provide my input regarding that position. Okay, go for it. So, if you are willing to serve as the chair of this committee, I will fully support that. Um, your level of you know your background in this area, and I think you leading this committee has been beneficial to our governing body. So if you are willing to serve again, I will fully support that. Uh, well, so those thank are my you. two cents. Thank you, yeah, thank you. I, I am willing to, to serve again um, and I appreciate um, the endorsement. Um, so my recommendation is let's, I'll certainly serve for the next meeting and then we can lock in a vote um, in, in a month from now. Um, and Ms. Rizzi, if you have any questions, we can touch base offline. Great. Cool. All right, next item. All right, next item up is the uh, budget recap. So I know there was some discussion around this uh, regarding budget recap and debriefing from the, this past budget session or season. So um, Ms. Dorr, if you could kind of take the floor there and then I know Ms. Payne and uh, Ms. Braga, they'll be giving input to that. Um, great. Well, um, I think uh, this was just a placeholder um, to make sure that we captured any lessons learned from the budget season this year. Um, so my recommendation would be um, let's capture the recommendations from Ms. Page and Ms. Rizzi and then um, or any feedback that you all have. Um, and then I think it would be also wise to uh, make sure that we're soliciting feedback from our board colleagues. Um, and so Ms. Rizzi or Ms. Page, you all have um, any thoughts about the best way to collect that feedback? Um, let me know and we can bring it to the board at our meeting, but let's just start with um, Ms. Page. Uh, why don't you kick us off on any um, high level observations on how the budget process went this year and anything you'd um, keep going and doing the same that we did well or anything that you'd recommend we change for next year? Um, let me think about that. Um, you know, it's always room for improvement, but it's also room for the board to have a full understanding of this process and the willingness to receive the understanding or the willingness to receive information for from such as Mr. Parker, his level of expertise and also based on best practices. Um, so those are my comments right now, but I'm sure I will have some others. And I apologize for really being, because I'm moving around trying to leave the office. So I apologize. No worries. Um... Uh, and Ms. Page, is there, um, do you have any recommendations on the best way to capture feedback from our board colleagues via email, a discussion, a, a board meeting, any thoughts there? I would say via email because that gives everyone time to think about, you know, think about the process or, you know, opportunity 
to do their own research and then provide feedback. Great. Ms. Rissi, what are your thoughts on board engagement and any um, initial reflections on the budget process this year? Yeah, um, so yeah, it was my first time going through this process. Um, it, was a, it was a major undertaking, just working to try to understand it and, and make sure that I was aware of details. Um, I'm wondering, um, I'm not sure I saw this year, this, uh, this year, but I'm wondering if there's a way to like give us a presentation where like there are highlights about major changes or adjustments that were made from last year. I mean, I think that's a little bit of a cheat sheet that, that I could have used this time around. Um, does that sound reasonable to those of you who work on the budget? Or, or does that, you know, someone tell me, because it's like shooting in the dark for me because I have not done this before. But it seems like that would have been something that would have been helpful to have. Um, yeah, and, and we, um, I see there's a comment in the box. I, I, unless folks want, I'll, we'll just kind of keep this casual. So, um, you know, I would say if, if it's okay with you, Ms. Rizzi, if uh, members of the administration want to chime in and answer questions, go ahead and do that. Michelle, you're on mute. That's a rookie mistake. Um, a year and a half in for that. Um, I think what you mentioned, Ms. Rizzi, uh, absolutely makes a lot of sense. And I think from the administration's perspective, and I can kind of see both sides of the, the continuum, um, I think that there were times where, yes, what's the big picture? What are the four big changes? You know, there really wasn't any money this year. Um, all our money came um, from the, the federal dollars um, uh, initially versus the desire to be extraordinarily granular. So this was the first time ever that we had produced the 300 page budget book at the beginning of the budget season and not one time was it ever referenced by the board through the entire um, budget process. Now, that could be because, shout out to Lynn, it was so awesome that there was no questions like you could reference the book and find the information you needed and the changes. It could be that actually it was just overwhelming um, and that while it's helpful to have as a supplementary tool, um, it's not really going to be what's driving the conversation. And again, we need to kind of zoom it up and that it's just there for questions. Or it's not necessary at the early stage. And I say that because it's literally hundreds of hours of work for Lynn to put that book together on such a fast time frame that maybe we don't need it until we're actually adopting the budget. And along the way, we're, um, you know, digging into big topics or, you know, a staff member's role that we might want to decompress or looking at a literacy plan. So it's more conceptual rather than the 300 pages of, of line items. So I think that might just be something helpful. Not that we can't continue to produce all of those things, but just knowing what's helpful for the board collectively um, and how to bring information um, to the board. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it was over. Well, you know, I, I tried to be. throw yeah. through 100 pages, but it, it was a lot to digest. Yeah. And yeah, I kind of wanted to like see a comparison, like where are the big changes? What was, you know, exactly the same last year and what has changed? And and that would have been helpful to kind of know to, to, you know, sift through like those 300 pages. So thank you, Michelle. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see that happen in the future if it's possible. Um, I would like to add to that comment. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I understand what Michelle is saying because we have in the past produced the binder, the budget binder, and, and then oftentimes the information is overwhelming, but what has been helpful in the past, and Lynn can speak to this, and then we've done it. We've done it um, since Superintendent Cameron has been on board to maybe the board can identify if there's a change in the budget versus actual or previous, say 10% or, mm. 
using 5% or 10% change. And that may alert us as a board, as far as our oversight to ask the administration, okay, why is it such a difference or such a high percentage or, you know, based on the threshold that we decide or determine that we want to look further, dig deeper into that line item. Does that sound like what you're trying, um, what you're talking about, Stephanie? Yeah, I think, you know, both the percentage and the specific amount would be helpful. But the percentage might, you know, be like a more immediate flag that, hey, maybe this is something we want to look at. And the yeah. percentage is there right now, but right. I think what I'm hearing you say is, could the administration, I'm making something up, anything that's more than a 25% change, because sometimes it's, you know, a salary change or just money moving from one line item to another, not actually changes within a particular department or team, we could proactively flag and say, the reason you're seeing this is because of why, um, just to help create like a two pager against the book or something like that, that's still high level. Okay, that's helpful feedback. Yeah. Because actually and, Lynn and, and I went line by line through it. So I would have been prepared for any questions and I had it all on a cheat sheet, <laughs> but we just didn't, we didn't end up going that way. But I, I guess we could also provide that proactively. And that's very similar to the monthly financial statement. So Stephanie, have you paid attention to the monthly financial statement that we receive on a monthly basis? Yes, I do look at those. Okay, and that has that same concept. Mm -hmm. If there's anything, um, what is the threshold? Um, was it five or ten percent? I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, those were indicators to let to let us know or to red flag what's going on with this line item. So that has very very much the same concept. Is Rizzi, any, um, any additional thoughts or feedback? No, um, just in terms of engaging the board, I think email and then also maybe a brief discussion in the meeting just so that the public is aware of what we um, have decided. Kind of makes sense. Okay, great. Um, so maybe um, uh, it seems like there are a couple of recommendations coming out of this committee related to the cheat sheet and capturing um, a certain percent change year over year and flagging those. I would um, defer to um, the finance and audit team to help us um, gauge what is a good flag. Is it 10%, is it 5%, is it 20%, whatever, you know, whatever it is, that would be helpful. And then um, I do think there's been some debate um, at the board level about the budget book itself. Um, and so I wanna make sure that we're giving clear guidance to the administration on whether they should produce that before the budget season starts or after. Um, I agree there are arguments to be made on both sides. The, the argument to be made on the before side is that you know, the public has the full information. Um, the argument to be made on the after side is that it takes the staff hundreds of hours. And if we make substantive changes to the budget, then they have to redo the work that they've done twice. So, um, so anyways, um, I think it would be good to get um, consensus from the board on exactly which way we want the administration to go with that. And also, um, you know, some consensus about what we're going to be asking for in advance. Um, you know, I think um, I don't like the idea of the administration sort of sitting line by line to go through stuff that we don't talk about, right? And so um, I think it would be helpful. I think hopefully we can get you guys a little bit more guidance on exactly what we want to be focused on. And then we can hold ourselves accountable if we go beyond that scope and you all are not prepared. Um, that's on us for not, you know, seeking clear expectations on the front end. So um, I think if it's okay with the group, um, I captured the feedback from uh, Ms. Page and Ms. Ms. Rizzi's comments. Um, I can put it into an email for the board to get um, additional feedback from them and, a, and some clarification around the, the budget book specifically. 
Um, and then maybe we can um, put all that feedback in a public document um, and then put it on board docs and just let the public know that it is there um, and that we've captured it. And if there's any additional discussion, great. If not, it'll be captured on the feedback. My uh, two cents as it relates to the feedback of the process is um, one, I feel like a lot of our um, budget sessions are um, like, what is this? What is this? What is this? And then we don't actually change anything. Um, and so I would love for some, um, I, I think that we've always had this challenge about how to get the board's authorship on the budget um, in a way that we get feedback and that it feels like we're actually doing something as it relates to the budget rather than just, you know, kind of busy work. Um, and so, um, I don't know, I don't have a great solution for that, but that's certain, I've always felt that way about the budget work sessions is that it's like a lot of information from the administration to us, um, but there's not a lot of discussion time. And so, um, so I would love um, feedback from this group and from the board as a whole about how we make those meetings as productive as, as possible for all parties. Um, my second piece of feedback is around principal engagement. I think that we've gotten a lot better over the past couple of years in terms of soliciting feedback from principals. But I do think that um, I have heard that there's um, you know, two sort of schools of thought. One is still a little bit of confusion about how granular the principals should um, make their own budget requests. We don't want them to be requesting staplers as an example. We want them to be requesting, you know, we should have a basic need that, or a basic understanding that principals get their um, their supplies budget. We should understand if principals don't feel like they have, you know, the full supplies to support their school. But I, you know, I wouldn't want them to be saying, you know, I need one tape dispenser and two staplers. Um, but I also have heard uh, feedback that principals. Um, sometimes feel like they put a lot of work into their budgets and then it's not always captured. And so I want to make sure that um, uh, as part of the process that there's, you know, kind of robust community engagement down principals and teacher level, staff level, and that's kind of flowing up to the top. Um, and so, um, so those would be my two pieces of feedback. Um, you know, I think, I know you guys put in a tremendous amount of work around budget season and, and we're very grateful to you. And hopefully maybe we as a board getting a little bit of alignment on the front end can make it um, a little bit more productive for everyone. So, and, and Liz, I have something that I would like to add. Um, when we talk about community engagement and public information for the public, I think from this committee, as well as from the board perspective, we need to be consistent, consistent when we talk about community engagement, because we have this board, we've demonstrated different meanings of what does community engagement, public information. So that is something I think it is pertinent that this board decide and keep it consistent when we talk about community engagement and providing public information, I think that it's very important and very is very critical. If we really want to keep our community engaged, then we need to be serious about keeping the community engaged in this process, not for certain subjects, but for everything. And so I think this committee, you know, this is a start um, as well as the full board, I think, you know, we really need to come to terms, you know, what do we mean by that? Yeah. Would you all agree? Um, certainly heard. And I think, um, we can ask that as a thought provoking question to the other board members, um, when we solicit feedback around the budget as well. So, um, Liz, I have just one last comment that I think is just very important framing for any budget conversations over the next three years. And that is that we now will have received close to $200 million in one-time dollars. Um, we've gotten 55 most recently, 12 before, and we're going to, in the end of June, bring to the board the proposal for the $122 million. And so, I'm going to be slightly hyperbolic here. In some ways, the idea queue is closed. After this $122 million, 
any recurring money that we get from the city or state really needs to be pulling things off of these one-time dollars to secure them into our operating budget. Otherwise, we need to be prepared to re release staff or just simply stop programming. And so I do think that we're going to be in a very unique situation for the next three years and the budget conversations will be unlike what they have ever been before because really, it there won't be a lot of opportunity to do new things without some very clear trade-offs. And I'm not, um, that's always a tough conversation to have is what do we want to stop doing? Um, but I do think that as we're talking to the board over the next six months to prepare, how do we want to enter budget season? I'm not sure if it will be, you know, with let's generate lots of new ideas about what we want to do. I think we need to do that in June as we visit the, the final federal stimulus pocket of money, the ARP. Um, and then we need to be very judicious with money moving forward. Yeah, um, excellent point. And I think, um, I think that uh, I hadn't um, digested that reality um, until you put it that way. But I do think that um, that will need to be a very large focus of how we anchor our discussions um, yeah. around the budget. Um, and I, yeah, Ms. Rizzi, go ahead. I have a question, you know, at some point, is it that, you know, I don't know how much engagement the board um, has with this, but is, is there a time when we can go through and streamline things and say, hey, maybe, you know, we're spending too much in this place, or maybe this is not necessary. Is there ever a moment of trimming where we look and say, hey, these, there might be better uses of our money than what we've, what we've been allocating it for right now. Great. Yeah, I think that can be part of the budget process. That's generally, um, it's usually a process of adding <laughs> ideas rather than cutting, but I think it can be both. I don't, I don't, and I don't mean cut as much as I mean streamline. Sure. Yeah, I think efficiencies. Okay. Um, any other um, uh, thoughts before we move on to the next agenda item? Okay, great. Uh, next item. All right. So next up is an audit update for FY 2021, as well as starting to look forward to the FY 2022 uh, work plan. So, um, and I don't have a fancy presentation for that. Um, so we, um, I'm going to let Latanya present where we are currently um, in the 2021 work plan. And then I'll talk through some other things as far as 2020, 2021 and carry over into 2022 from our thought process. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Latanya Holloway. And I'm going to discuss basically what we've been working on um, this particular fiscal year. And it's mainly been the um, SAF turnover audits. That has been a large undertaking. There were um, actually 17 schools that we had to um, audit for turnovers. Um, in that process, because we are virtual, you know, it's taken a little bit longer because we have to establish, you know, um, appointment times um, with the principals as well as the finance officers, um, as well as, you know, give them time to get the documentation to us, as well as review the documentation and then set up um, an appointment for an exit conference. Right now where we are, we have done all of the audits itself. Um, we have about maybe four or five exit conference. That's just to give them the information of their findings. And then after that, we will be writing the audit reports, getting management responses from those um, four or five schools that we have left. And then there will be a comprehensive report that we're gonna put together um, that has all of the audit findings for the turno SAF turnovers um, to present to the finance committee um, in, at the next meeting. Um, right now with SAF, it's a lot going on. Um, we will be contacting finance to um, for schools that have say five or more, four or more, I'm sorry, four or more um, audit findings 
to basically do um, some type of remediation, some additional training with that individual. Um, and the principal has asked, you know, some principals has, has asked myself um, if I would meet with them and go over some things as far as the turnover audit goes to brief them to, you know, help them um, going forward and what to look for and things of that nature. So I have agreed to do that as well. So um, that's where we currently are in the process. I can honestly say that this year's turnover audit um, is looking a little bit worse than last year. So there are uh, quite a few things that we need to work on. Um, we need to improve. Um, I will be working closely with finance um, to, you know, help everyone um, get the, the things that we see within the audit findings um, fixed, the issues fixed, and to basically um, work with them going forward to help out the principals as well as the finance officers in any areas that they need assistance with. Is there any questions for me at this time? Yeah, Latanya, can you, can you yeah. just briefly explain, um, and this is for the public, for those that are watching, um, as well as Ms. Rizzi, can you explain what triggers or what, what, what causes us to go out and do turnover audits or what that audit is in particular? Um, yes, a turnover audit is basically if the principal or the finance officer leaves the school or um, we have a, a situation where there was no finance officer so at the school at all. So we have to go out and we have to basically give them a clean slate. Um, so we look at the, all of the documentation um, for a specific period and we just make sure that whoever is in that position understands what their um, roles and responsibilities are as far as the student activity funds go. So that's what a turnover audit um, consists of. Um, we look at everything from check disbursements, receipts, bank reconciliations. Um, I keep in touch with the PTA council. So, you know, we know who is compliant with PTAs. We look at um, account activities. So, just the overall, we, we look at a large mass of things with, with the turnover audits um, compared to what we do with the year end audits. So that's basically what the um, SAF turnover audits consist of. Are there any additional questions for me? I think Ms. Page had a question. She was sounding like she was here to speak. Ms. Page. Ms. Page. Well, while we're waiting for Ms. Page, I want to highlight a couple really positive things um, and appreciations for uh, certainly our, our partnership. Um, so there's three really exciting things that I wanted to highlight that have come out of the SAFs that uh, audits, while may seem small, are I think good examples of when we get a finding um, we're able to work on them. So the first is after the, the last round of audits, one of the things Milton said is every school needs a safe. We need to have, and the, this is a basic thing. And um, there were some that just didn't have it. And that's something that we were able to get in place um, in all of our schools this year. Another major finding from last year is that we had inactive accounts. Um, so there were accounts from potentially years past that um, we no longer knew what the initial purpose of that fundraising has been, had been. And with Milton's um, uh, support and, and Latanya's worked with all of our financers, officers in the, our finance department to roll all of that money into active accounts this year in a, in a one-time move. Um, the board likely remembers approving that so that we won't see that, um, that audit citation this year. And then finally, as I was sharing right when we get, got started today, Today, we rolled out to all principals a new structure for finance officers. So uh, I'm not sure if that means you might have more turnover, but very clearly defined expectations for the role, a selection process for principals, competencies to look for, um, accountability of what has to happen um, to be successful in this role, and then a compensation structure where we have now actually given schools money 
to pay their finance officer an above and beyond stipend for the completion of this work as a signal for its importance. So um, I think these are three important things to highlight as well, that while there may be some things that continue to be challenges, um, we are taking a bite at the apple uh, each time and, and hopefully making incremental progress um, in important ways. Yeah. So looking and I want to say next round and then picking the next three things uh, to dig into and really appreciate Wanda uh, and her team's efforts on that as well. And I want to say thank you, Michelle, that what you just said about, you know, um, basically, you know, seeing the finance officer's role and, and you know, just making sure that there is, you know, um, uh, understanding around, you know, what the duties and the roles of the financial officer is, is very important. And it also helps us a lot in the audit department. So, you know, I want to thank you all. I want to thank your team for, you know, doing that um, because that is very, very important and it's very helpful. So again, thank you very much. Team member. Um, and, and so with that being said, there, as you all can hear, there's a lot of work going on right now with SAF. Um, and the one person we didn't we didn't highlight, and I do want to talk about some of the direct the good things we do, but that's being done. Um, Wanda has Justin Carr on her team, um, and Justin works really hard with the finance officers. Uh, however challenging that may be for him at times, um, he works really hard with them, and we're always in conversation about how to get things done, um, as well as what should be actually going on out in the field when we see it. Um, and Justin kind of makes us, you know, he alerts us to certain things too. So kudos to Justin and Nishan and them as well, Wanda. Um, but they're doing a decent, they're doing a really good job. Yes, he is very much so appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. And so with that being said, we'll go on to the next part of the work plan that I'm I'm really, um, this is where this challenge becomes for us because there's the one component, which is the SAF, um, as well as turnovers. And as you all know, it's-, it's May I just also just pause just for yes, questions from the um, group in case there's any, Ms. Rizier? I'm sorry, I apologize. Sorry, I just wanna make sure everyone has a chance to ask questions if they have any. Sure. And then I also wanna do a quick time check. We try and keep these meetings to an hour. Um, we've got 10 minutes left. Um, it, uh, I know we started a little late. Are folks okay going to 6.35 today? I'm good with 635. <laughs> On the dot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry, Mr. Parker. Thank you. No, you're fine. Um, so with FY21, there are a few performance audits in there. Um, review of last Sorry. Yes, Ms. Page. You're on mute. Ms. Page. Ms. Page um, said her connection is um, uh, bad. She did send me a text she's and talking, asked, we, she, she's oh. talking. We can't hear you. You're talking. <laughs> You're on mute. Oh. Um, excuse me, but I'm having probably didn't have a question. So how many times are Love <laughs> Ms. Page, I'm sorry to say your connection is, um, we can't hear you. Um, if you maybe try and throw your question into the chat. Unless you're driving. <laughs> I don't know if you're in a car. <laughs> Um, I did, Ms. Page did um, text me and she wanted to know how many times we do provide training. We provided training at the beginning of the year. Um, I think it was around October. And we just provided another round of training to everyone about two, three weeks ago. Okay. Let me put it. She said, put it in the chat. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, while we're waiting for her, Mr. Parker, why don't you go ahead and. Um... Okay, no problem. Um, so, with the, with the performance audits um, this year, 
Um, it's going to be my recommendation and suggestion to the board. We had three audits on the books that we really wanted to get to performance wise, which was the um, laptops uh, distribution process. Even though that was a new process, we understood that, but we wanted to see some controls around it to understand how the controls operated, as well as there was a time and attendance audit um, based on leave balances for HR. Um, and I believe it was procurement that we wanted to look at. Um, but the level of, again, 17 schools and the turnovers, um, as well as time off and some sick time and things like that, that kind of contributed to us not being able to do that at this point yet. Um, and so what we wanted to do, and our, my suggestion will be to take at least one of those performance audits into FY 2022. And the reason why is because um, as much as I hate to say we didn't know what we didn't know, but last year with the capacity of two auditors trying to audit an entire school system, um, we want to make sure that we can get out one efficient audit, at least one efficient performance audit, because those are heavy lifts um, for us. And so uh, that's part of the reason and why we, that's part of my 2022 update, or as far as my recommendation for 2022. Um, as well as putting a risk assessment process into play where we ask the directors and managers to actually fill out their own risk assessment documentation and submit it back to audit for audit planning purposes. Um, that's where we are right now. Um, and so as of now, you'll see, like I said, you'll see for FY21, which is right now, you'll see the turnovers as well as the year end. But for 2022, I do want to sit down um, of course, last year was Michelle and I, and it'll probably be Michelle and I again this year, uh, but want to sit down and really um, figure out which are the more important prioritization for audit purposes um, that'll be both beneficial to the administration as well as beneficial to the school board. Makes sense. Um, Mr. So what is the best way for us to, I would love to get on a cadence of having semi-regular updates on where we are mm -hmm. on the audit work plan. So um, does it make sense for you all to uh, propose that cadence um, at our next finance meeting? Sure. So we can do a deep dive into specific topics at each meeting? Sure, okay. sure we can. Great. And that's actually what I wanted to get into with this group is the finance group, uh, finance committee knowing we don't have a um, official audit committee is to get more in tune with what things are coming up, what things are more important and how they all play into the work plan as far as do we need to change that work plan? You know, because it is a fluid document, even after it's approved, we can make changes to it as long as it's approved by the um, school board. So, um, and again, with the understanding this year, and I'm thinking right now, hopefully Michelle, um, that we only have maybe two or three turnover audits going into FY 2022. Um, knowing we don't know what the 30th will bring us um, as of yet, but we're hoping that it's less than five um, for FY 2022. And um, will you need us to approve that new plan as a board? Um, yes, okay. yes. So once we get it, um, hopefully in June, I'll bring. I'll be able to bring it forward so you all can see it, and um, we can get it approved. Yeah, I think we bring it to us, and then we'll bring it to the larger board. Sweet. Okay, that'll work. Yes. And because the names of the finance officers are due to Wanda by June 11th, we'll know then before our next finance committee meeting, uh, committee meeting, how much finance officer turnover you'll have, and certainly by then, I hope any final resignations or anything that might come from a principal. I don't have those on my radar now, but obviously we know that there were um, two. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, sorry. Anyone um, else have anything to add to that topic? Okay. All right. Ready to move on to the next? Yep, and we're at the end. Um, actually, it's the <laughs> it's actually the priorities, the FY twenty twenty two priorities of the finance committee. Great. Um, so I think we talked a little bit about this at the beginning, um, just what they want, what folks want to see um, from this committee. 
Um, but I'll leave um, some space now for any um, agenda items that we want to consider at future meetings. Certainly, I have on the list, Mr. Parker, um, a schedule of when we'll do a deep dive of each of the audit work plan topics, mm -hmm. um, a review of the board's email feedback around the budget process for next year, um, <clears throat> and um, potentially a review of the turnover from the finance. Uh, I think that's just a quick just update. I don't know if we need a full agenda item there. Um, is there, um, are there any specific requests that um, Ms. Page or Ms. Rizzi, oh, and then the election of the chair officially. Any specific um, requests from Ms. Page or Ms. Rizzi about the next meeting or future meetings? All right, well, if you, um, if anyone has any additional thoughts um, about how we want to structure this, um, please let me and Mr. Parker know so that we can get it added to the agenda. And real quick, do I yeah. have a copy of the audit work plan? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, we may not. If you don't have one, Ms. Rizzi, I can send you one that oh, we That's what through. I meant. Yeah. I don't think you do, but I, we, you, you may have a copy. Oh, no, sorry. No, I asked if I had it. Yeah. Oh, oh sorry. I, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes, you may have it. So you, will, you will send it to me, Mr. Parker. Yeah. And I can... I'll send it to you. It was included as part of, you yeah, know, because it, was, it was on board docs, right? But I board. think it was approved before she got on the board. But it's, yeah, it's hard to find. Yeah, so we'll just make sure you have it in your inbox. Okay. Thank you. And Mr. Parker, it might be good also to send Ms. Rizzi the um, student activity fund audits that you performed. Um, okay. Well. Okay. Okay. Great. Well, um, that's a wrap, everyone. I um, adjourn this.